And this is the problem with computers and education. Nobody is saying that computers can't be used for learning. Literally anything can be used for learning. The argument is that they're so often not used for learning that as soon as we try and shoehorn this function in and sit them down and say, all right, now I want you to use the tool for this, that is a massive hurdle we have to overcome. Hello everybody and welcome to this week's From Theory to Practice where I take a look at the research so you don't have to. Now as you know we're taking a journey through my new book 10 Things Schools Get Wrong and How We Can Get Them Right and this week we're going to take a look at chapter 7 which is entitled Computers The Problem with Primary Function. And the article I've selected this week that aligns with that chapter is kind of different than most articles. It's called The Common Sense Census Media Use by Tweens and Teens and it's published by Common Sense Media. This is a non-for-profit research and advocacy organization out of the US. Now to understand this paper we have to wrap our heads around the concept of primary function. Now every tool in the world has what's called its primary function and as a simple explanation of what this is it says how do 90% of the people in the world spend 90% of their time using that tool? Whatever the answer to that question is, that's the primary function of your tool. Now why does this matter? This matters because when most people engage with a tool they will automatically and subconsciously activate that primary story and start thinking along those lines. So as a simple example, imagine I handed you a hammer. Now I imagine immediately you're going to start looking for things to hit. Now this isn't because a hammer can't be used for other things. You could use it for a ton of things. You could use it as a bottle opener, as a doorstop, you could throw it at birds. It's got a million uses, but 90% of the time, 90% of us use a hammer to hit things. So as soon as we get the tool, we activate that story and we start to act accordingly. Now why does this matter? This matters because computers are simply tools. This means computers have a primary function. When students sit down in front of a computer, what is the automatic story that activates in their brain? And that will drive then how they use that computer. So what is the primary function of computers? Well, that's where this paper comes in. Through a survey of thousands of kids around the US, this group determined how are kids most often using a computer? Essentially, what is its primary function? And what they found is kind of shocking. So here we go. Let me just list these values out for you. So per week, kids between the ages of 8 and 18 use computers in the following way. Here we go. 10 hours, 44 minutes playing video games. 10 hours, 2 minutes watching television or film clips. 8 hours, 14 minutes scrolling social media. 7 hours, 32 minutes listening to music. 3 hours, 25 minutes doing homework. 2 hours, 5 minutes doing schoolwork. 1 hour 14 minutes reading for pleasure, 52 and a half minutes creating digital content, and a whopping 14 minutes writing for pleasure. Now let's extrapolate this. Assuming that school is only in session 180 days a year, this means that kids on average per year will spend about 198 hours using a computer for learning purposes. This is compared to over 2,000 hours using a computer to passively consume rapidly switching media content. How are 90% of the people spending 90% of their time using this tool? I think we just found our primary purpose. And this is the problem with computers and education. Nobody is saying that computers can't be used for learning. Literally anything can be used for learning. The argument is that they're so often not used for learning that as soon as we try and shoehorn this function in and sit them down and say, all right, now I want you to use the tool for this, that is a massive hurdle we have to overcome. This is why when students use a computer to do homework, they make it on average six minutes before they begin accessing social media and multitasking. And when kids use a computer in class, they spend 38 minutes of every hour off task. It's not because they lack attention or metacognitive ability. It's because they've literally spent 2,000 hours a year training themselves to use the device in that manner. That's its primary function. And that isn't going to simply disappear just because we ask them to learn on it. And in fact, this is what the research shows out. So we've been doing research with computers and editors for nearly 30 years, and it keeps coming back that by and large, computers harm learning, and at their very best, they're simply equivalent to traditional teaching practices. In fact, even the OECD has admitted that students who use computers very frequently at school do a lot worse in most learning outcomes. All right, so let's bring this back to us. What does this then mean for us as teachers? The first thing is this means we should only be using computers and technology when it serves a very clear, unambiguous purpose. Tech for the sake of technology typically harms learning because most students don't understand these tools as learning devices. So this means things like note taking, reading for comprehension, research for projects. The more we can do this stuff offline, the better chance we have of avoiding digital distraction and actually driving student achievement. 
Now the second idea then is when we do use computers and technology in our classroom, we have to be willing to control and monitor that. So this means blocking out access to the internet, blocking out certain websites, maybe only using computer devices that have one program and that force kids to only focus on one thing at a time. The more we can control what they're doing in a digital environment, the better chance we have of keeping them focused on our learning intentions. And the third thing is super important. It's that we should never confuse engagement with learning. So we've known for 30 years that computers aren't great for learning. Why? Because learning by and large requires deliberate, focused, prolonged thought. And most people, when they use a computer, they immediately just start jumping between ideas and pages. There is no prolonged thought. So what a lot of developers have done is they've said, okay, let's turn learning from this deliberate thought into this more multitasking type thinking. And what they do is they gamify learning. So things are always changing. There's scores, there's good guys and bad guys. Now, when kids play these games, they're certainly engaged for longer periods of time. They're doing less multitasking, but what is it they're really learning? There's a good rule of thumb that Dan Willingham says, memory is the residue of thought. We only learn about those things we are focused on. And when it comes to these exciting learning games, most kids aren't focused on the content they're focused on the game. Can I get a high score? Can I beat my friends? Can I hit number one on the leaderboard? I call this the Oregon Trail effect. I grew up playing that game for hours and I could tell you everything about hunting, about fording a river, about dying of dysentery. But only recently did I learn that that game was meant to be a history lesson. I can tell you nothing about the Oregon Trail except maybe that it ended in Oregon. The rest is just noise to me. Why? Because memory is the residue of thought. When we adapt learning to suit the primary purpose of a computer, we run the risk of focusing attention on the wrong aspects of learning. So even though engagement might go up, if we're not careful, this will have no or even negative impact on the ultimate learning we hope to do. So what other issues do we have with computers and when might computers actually be beneficial for learning? Well, that's what we take a look at in chapter seven of this book. So if you love this topic, a lot more to dive into. I hope you all learned something good. And if you like what you saw, if you can give us a thumbs up and subscribe below, it'll make sure more people get a chance to see this on YouTube. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Bye y'all.